Hello again and welcome to this next tutorial. We're going to be looking at devices and channels and having a look at the EMI controllers and how to use them. We're also going to move on to talk about devices throughout AE2 and then we're also going to have a little bit of an introduction to subnetworking as well. As always, likes will be much appreciated as well as comments and even a subscribe. <laughs> Hope you enjoy the tutorial. In front of us we have eight devices, four ME drives on either side with a glass cable. Now the ME glass cable itself can only allow eight devices at a time to transmit data along itself. As soon as you add on an extra device, the whole network ceases to work. So if I go and chuck on a terminal in front of it, you can see that all the lights throughout go off. If I say go and remove a ME drive, you can see that all the lights come on and the terminal itself starts to work as well. <coughs> as soon as I go and put that ME drive back on, even if it isn't transmitting any data, as we can see because it hasn't actually got a drive in there at all, the whole system stops working. So we need to think about something else. Before we get too far ahead, let's go and look at some different variants of the ME cable. These are going to become pretty useful throughout, especially as you go and increase the amount of devices you want to have on your network. To start, you're going to want to make the covered cable, which is a ME glass cable with a piece of wool, and that'll give you one of those. You can go and use one of those with a redstone and a glowstone dust to give you some smart cable. Now these are really good because they can visually show the amount of devices on a network with lines, so if you're not too good to get going, these can be quite useful to see all that information. The next we have is our DENS cable. Later on we'll be able to use up to 32 devices along this, so they are really really useful. You can see it's made from using four of the ME covered cables. So I've got eight ME interfaces and each one of these counts as one device on our network. So normally with a piece of ME glass cable we won't be able to use anything further as shown before as we'll be maxing out all the channels. So with the smart cable, we can visually represent this by adding it on. More and more li lines appear along the cable, starting off with the dark ones first, and then the dark lines become bright lights along it, showing all eight channels being used. Luckily, there are ways to get around this. One of them is the ME controller. Quite a cool looking block, and as you can see, not too bad to make. F four pure fluids crystals made in the same manner of the surge quartz just turn it into dust and then sand to get your seed and four sky stone blocks which are from the sky stone that found in the meteorites and you bake them up to give you the blocks and one engineering processor so this like all the other ones has six sides and we can use each six now with a single piece of the ME glass cable out the side, this will allow eight devices along this piece of glass cable. If we have the same on the other side, this will then go and allow another eight devices. Quite cool. I'm just going to visually show you what I mean here. So we have an ME controller hooked up to a power cell. On top I've got four terminals, and on either side I've got eight ME drives, so that would be a total of 20 devices, normally maxing out our system. So when we go and add the smart cable on this side, you can see it goes straight up to the four white lines, meaning that all eight devices are in use. When we do the same coming out the other side, all eight devices are in use. And when we come out of the top, you can see that all four of these terminals are also working. And we can see inside our system. So the ME controllers can form multi-block structures, but once again there are also some rules. So next to creative energy, we're going to put down few together and you can see it starts to form this multi-block structure. Now you can only have up to seven in a straight line before you get this red effect throughout like so. So at this point the ME controller won't work. Additionally to this you can only have one ME controller on a network. So say if I go and pop another one down here, you can see it's redded out. So I've got here a big 7x7 in every direction. 
we see if we go and use a, another ME control at any point of this on the outside, it's going to redden up and it's not valid. We can, however, place controls in the middle, like so. So, with this structure as well, we can also go and bring it out further if we want to. That's seven. Yep, making a full 3D structure. So, as long as the blocks are when within a 7x7x7, seven by seven by seven, it will work just fine. So there is another rule about the ME controllers, and that's how many they can have on their sides. So you've got this one has been powered underneath. And if we go and add the controllers onto the sides, you see that when I add the fourth, this middle one's going to grey out. And they all go and grey out. So we have to limit the number amount of faces on its axis. So this has got one, two, three around this axis here. As this block is on a different axis, it doesn't count. So like I said before, if we're going to add one here, it shuts off. So when building your ME controllers, I would consider thinking about using different coloured cables. Because if you're going to use your fluids throughout, you can see they're going to join up and they're going to transmit data along themselves. So I would recommend using different colour cables like so. So when I go and make my controllers, I use this 3x3 three three sort of shape. And what I go and use is sort of the primary colour glass cables. So anything that is a primary dye, so green is from cacti, blue is from your lapis, white is just bone meal. So I don't try and use any of the shades such as the light blues or the limes. And what I'd go and do is put a different colour on every front. Like so. So then when you're running cables off, they don't start getting all confusing and whatnot. Okay, so that's way too much on ME controllers. So let's talk a little bit about what are devices. So in front of me I have all the devices that I can find and think of anyway <laughs> that will use up a channel on our ME network. So you've got the ME drive, ME chest, interface, IO port, security terminal, crafting units. That's all the crafting units will all use up a channel in the part of a multi-block, which I'll show again in a second. ME pattern terminals, ME interface terminal, import bus, export bus, crafting terminal, a conversion monitor, a P2P tunnel, a storage bus, a ME storage monitor, a ME terminal, and an ME level admitter. So you can see a lot of these as well when you hover, they say device offline, and that's how you know it is a device as well. Just going to re-familiarise ourselves with what we know about channels and, and the crafting units. So on this one we've got the co-crafting storage, the crafting co-processing unit and the crafting monitor. And as we can see on our ME smart cable is only using up one channel. So as we make this bigger it will still go and only use up one. So what I've got here is a 3 by 2 by 2 and when we connect it up you can see when it becomes online it still only uses up 2 so if I carry on running the cable along here so I've seen some people worry about this you can see it is actually still only using up the 2 it's not doubling up or anything like that so we mentioned about trying to get the most out of our ME controller well the way to do that is using ME dense cable so an ME controller can actually have up to 32 devices coming out of one side with the use of dense cable, and these can hold up to 32 devices. But you have to worry about what inputs you're going to use because things like smart cable are going to use A at a time. So I'm going to use some smart cable here with the dense cable, and it visually will show you better how many devices run along the cable as well. So when I connect up to the first one, you see it's got one line here, and the dense cable isn't showing at any at the moment simply because it has to show so many being 32. I think four devices equal lo one line. So when I go and connect up the next one you can see on this piece of cable it's only showing one line even though we have two devices connected. And as we go back I've got one device here and the bit closest to the smart ca the dense cable has two lines. So this continues when we're going to three you can see one line, two line, three line. And we're going to add a fourth so you can see the first blue line has appeared on our dense cable. 
so I don't care will go up in fours. So when I go and connect up the next four drives here, you can see I've got one, it shows two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So if you've got this spanning for quite a bit of distance, you can hopefully go and see the exact point in which the cable is being overloaded. On our cable, can also see that two lines are now being fully used up. And just to show you that it can actually take more than just eight, we can see that this now device is online as well as all, well as all the others. And when we're going to connect up these next eight, oops, like so, you can see that they're all on, all working fine, and the dense cable is actually showing from this joint upwards it's showing that it's got 8 devices and down the bottom it's showing that it has 16. So at the start of the video I mentioned there are ways to get around the channels and we can see that the ME controller is one of them. Another way is we can create sub-networks. I believe this was introduced by Soren who's a mod author. But anyway. So what I have here is a creative energy cell. <coughs> our glass cable and this goes into a ME interface, a flat ME interface and on the other side of that interface we have an ME storage bus and coming out of it we have the flux cable and you can see that all these ME drives here are working now this storage bus and the interface are allowing data to pass through themselves but in order to make sure both sides are powered because this ME interface won't allow power through we've added our quartz fibre that allows power but no data and then just wrap some glass cable around and then once again quartz fibre going into an ME glass cable. So at the moment we have one device, two device, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then so what we can go and do is repeat this process by doing a glass cable, uh, ME interface, ME storage bus, ME glass fiber, fiber, quartz fiber so you can see device online device offline because it's not getting any power yet you can see that these are all greyed out still and then when we go and put our next piece of glass cable and you can see they're all online so no controller just this clever use of interfaces and storage bus and you can keep on going like this as well so it is quite a useful little trick so probably going just go and quickly talk about the ME storage bus since we just mentioned it there so once again the ME storage bus looks like so and you can see that it says that the device is offline when looking at it and we go and make it by an ME interface now this can be the full block version or the flat version with a sticky piston and a regular piston and effectively what the storage bus allows us to do is interact with other blocks within other mods that have storage so here in front of me I've got a deep storage unit I've got a crystal chest from iron chests I've got a regular minecraft chest a thermal expansion strong box, a ender chest, a factorization oak wooden barrel, and even a hopper. You can see that all these are on. Now when we right click on our ME storage bus, we have a little section here and what we can do is specify what we want to get go through it. If you click on the priority here and say click it to a thousand, when you put an item into the system, it's going to make sure that it puts the device in such. So as we can see we have no items in this deep storage unit. We have no items throughout in any of these devices. Now, I don't have anything else connected to this network. I don't have a ME drive or anything like that. But when I go and add a stack of stone into the system, as I can do, and take it back out again, and we go and look on our deep storage unit, we can see there's one full stack. So let's say I want to put another full stack in, just to show you. You can see 64 and 64, it's got two full stacks in it. So crystal chest had dirt in it. Okay, so it's going to have dirt in it again. <laughs> and when we're going to put this into our system, we can see that it comes up there. And this can be done with all of them, basically. It's quite a nice, useful little block. I hope that this has gone and been a useful tutorial for you. And I hope I've given you a little bit more insight into channels and how we can go about making the use of more by using the controllers and sub-networking. And I hope I've 
pointed out the different devices in AE2 and also a little bit of introduction to subnetworking as well. Thanks very much for your time.